Honey, baby, thank you for coming to my channel, my YouTube channel, guys. It's Deb Chanel's 48th World. That's where you at unless you stumbled upon my video and you didn't know who I was. Well, honey, let me tell you, that was breaking news, child. On today, yes, the show happened last night, which was on the 29th, I do believe, on Watch What Happened Live. Child, please. Titus Burgess. Oh, I'm sorry, Titus, uh, yeah, Titus Burgess. He showed up and showed out, honey. That's him, Titus Burgess. I remember him from the unstoppable um, sense that Procter & Gamble had brought out. You know, he was in a little short commercial for the Downey in-wash scent boosters that you put in in your clothes. That's where I really remember him from. And I think he played... Um, and though we have some old movies he was playing in, but he's been around since 2015. Okay, and it might have been a little maybe 2013 is when he started being out and known about in Hollywood. Okay, but he wasn't playing with Andy, honey. You talking about shade, you talking about two snaps in a circle, you talking about all up in the gay scene. Okay. <laughs> I thought heterosexuals cut up and act out, but honey, they got the running spot for me, honey. I was like, I was laughing too much to even pretty much pay attention to, okay, these are really men up here. You know what I'm saying? They first and foremost are a man, whether they want to carry themselves like women or they want to just be out, uh, what do you call it? outspoken as well as just out and seen you know because of their demeanor i said lord they are wilding out on tv like husband and wife up there that's a hot mess titus was upset about something that he only briefly gave us some of his behavior but andy had pissed him off i don't know if he was pissing him off because of eddie murphy and he was trying to throw low bows at him low blows i should say because i always kind of thought even with uh, Teddy Pendergrass, just to get off the subject, and even Luther Vandross, I kind of felt they were like bisexual men. All right. So, and maybe Eddie Murphy's just not out like that, um, but I consider Eddie Murphy kind of bisexual too, even though um, he was known at, uh, well, known for coming out as heterosexual. But I think going down the, 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 uh, highway of life and whatnot, he discovered who he really was. Uh, even though he had kids and all like that, because some people take a long time to figure out what sex they really uh, rather identify with. You know what I'm saying? And I think he, Andy was asked, asking a little bit too many personal questions and uh, Andy was finna get his neck chopped off. Okay, with verbal words. Okay, not intent of actually doing it or at least i didn't think titus would go that way but titus was mad y'all he was mad as hell at andy cohen <laughs> he didn't sign the little registry book when you come on the show and you know as a guest and you just signed it to let you know it was here he was here and all his other past and, and future guests would take part in child he told the producer whatever he knew i was him he got film footage <laughs> And I guess he didn't even take him a little sip. He didn't even stay for the after show. But if you don't know what show I'm talking about, I'm talking about the one that uh, aired on Sunday night. So I might be a little off on my days because I think I said yesterday, which was the 29th, but it really was the 28th, I believe. Uh, watch what happened live when Laverne Cox was on there uh, also. So he wasn't like on the stage by himself, and that was the only person uh, Andy was uh, interviewing that, that day. And I didn't think Laverne wanted to say, shit, let me sit down and not say that because this is going to be a match right here, a match of the wits and the tongue, honey. Two queens going at it together. Ooh, let me, let me just not, you know, let me just say what I got to say if he asked me. But right now, I'm going to be quiet because <laughs> I need to figure out what the hell is going on here. Okay. But anyway, if anybody don't know who Titus Burgess is, let me formally introduce you to his resume, okay? Titus Burgess, Burgess is an actor, okay? He was born on February 21st, uh, 1979. Oh, he is definitely a Pisces, if you want to know his zodiac sign. All right, and um, he lives, or his birthplace was Athens, Georgia. 
Athens, Georgia. Okay, I wonder did he know Nene back in the day because she's from Athens, Georgia. That was she was born and raised as well. Okay, Atlanta in the house. Woo, Atlanta in the house. Woo, we can sing, we can dance, we can a a. We can sing, we can dance, we can a a. That's why the A is so hot. That's why the A is so hot. And everybody else is not. Everybody else is not. We are known for the little baby uh, Hollywood. We are known for the little baby Hollywood. Everybody's moving from the West Coast. Everybody's trying to come on the East Coast. Oh, I thought I would rap a little bit. Okay. <laughs> I kind of got taken away. Okay. Because Titus would do that to you. Okay. He, he's funny. He's like, you know, he's attractive. His energy is just crazy. Uh, or we call it crazy good. So uh, let me tell you, get a little bit more history about him. Uh, he's famous for his critics. Choice Television Award nominated portrayal of Titus uh, Andromedon or Andromedon or something like that in the Netflix sitcom Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Now, I never saw the sh uh, little sitcom show. It, I'm pretty sure it was cool or whatnot, but, you know, I just didn't, you know, I'm not a big TV junkie anyway. It has to be special shows that sit me down and pay attention with. Because, oh boy, so. Excuse me, a, a sidetrack, a science fiction type person. You know, I like Twilight Zone. I like, uh, what do you call it, Star Trek, uh, Supernatural. You know, I'm kind of like one of those kind of folks. Okay, that will bring it up to date and to speed. Um, I like Stranger Things. Um, I, I can't really go into it, but just this stuff at the top, off the top of the dome, my head, that I can just bring up while I'm doing this video. Okay, but he's also noted for his performances in Broadway production of Jersey Boys, The Little Mermaid, and Guys and Dolls. In 2018, he started Netflix, Set It Up. Haven't seen that, but I'm sure anybody that really follows him and admires his work, they can probably tell you he was excellent in it. Okay, before his fame, he earned a bachelor's degree in music from the University of Georgia. He made his first Broadway appearance in 2005 production of the Beach Boys musical Good Vibrations. Um, in 2012, he released a solo music album titled Comfortable. As the only child, he spent his youth in Athens, Georgia, and is openly gay. His associations, uh, he appeared with Tina Fey in four episodes on the popular NBC comedy series 30 Rock. Now, I did watch that, so yeah, it does bring me to a venture that y'all know I saw him from somewhere. Now, I know he uh, acted out in some movies. Uh, the Smurfs, remember the Lost Village? Like I said, set it up. Then, uh, then came you. Um, and just a, a lot of host of other things uh, about him that you could find out easily by Googling his name because it does come up. I mean, he's a mom who's who. When you can just Google somebody's name and it pops up. <laughs> <laughs> they have made it okay whether it's good or bad whether they're a good person or a bad person don't matter they made it okay but his acting claim to fame he's a tv actor and like i said he's on this stoppables commercial very <laughs> loud representation of apparel okay but it fitted him and it fitted his personality so i ain't got nothing to say anything wrong with that situation okay but going back to uh the expose or the explosion or implosion that happened on Watch What Happens Live, um, there was an article written up in AOL.com, a journalist by the name of Gibson Johns. He wrote an article for that company. And let's just get into what the article said. And then I get to my opinion. Because you know I got one. I'm very long-winded. I have my sidebars when I'm dissecting and, and, and trying to um, what do you call it? Digest the information that's given to me because usually I just read the title and I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I might want to talk about that. I don't actually read it out until I come on uh, live with you all and I got my visuals to give you an idea of who I'm talking about, what I'm talking about, and giving you some scenes, some back footage, you know what I'm saying, of what actually happened. But let's get on into this article. It's titled, Andy Cohen and Titus Burgess in War or Words Over Contentious 
what watch what happens live appearance okay that was sunday this past sunday like i told you if you didn't catch it they got snippets go on aol and go to the entertainment field and you'll get somewhat of a clue on what may have happened i don't know if anybody else have a full footage of watch what happened live you know what i'm saying because you know when they get into editing and stuff if you don't watch when it's happening it's pretty much like oh well you know you're gonna get the chop up version but let's get into the article. It says Titus Burgess, Burgess, let me just call him TB. Okay, not tuberculosis. Okay, but it stands for uh, initials Titus Burgess. Okay, but TB stormed out of the Watch What Happens Live studio on Sunday night after uh, host Andy Cohen questioned about working with Eddie Murphy. Okay, again, like I gave you a little history about Eddie Murphy. At one point in time in the 80s when he was a stand-up comedy and he was just a comedian and he was coming up uh, uh, real heavy before he made um, Beverly Hills Cop 1, 2, and 3. Hell, I don't know if it was a 4, 5, 6, but I think I uh, can remember because I was a young uh, lady, teenager at the time when all Eddie Murphy was coming out and all that stuff with them red leather tight uh, jumpsuits he was having on. I'm like, good lord, man. All that level and it was red too. I'm like, oh my god, Ed, I know you sweating up under that mess. But anyway, moving on. Ed has been a stand up comedian for a very, very long time. Really one of the first pioneers in our day uh, of um, comedy, uh, stand up comedy, I should say. He's among a host of other people, especially Robin Harris. Now, he was like, Woo, child, I loved him and them baby kids, but that's just going a little bit too far. You don't know who he is. Google him. He would come up to not Robin Thicke, but Robin Harris, not the entertainer singer, but the comedian. OK, but getting back to this article, it says the unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt star appeared on the episode alongside actress Laverne Cox, doing which Cohen asked Burgess about working with Murphy and the upcoming film. Dodomite is my name, considering Murphy's well-known history of telling homophobic jokes early in his career, jokes that he has since apologized for. You know, like I said, people, you know, they haven't truly evolved, and they're just going with what's trending out there, and they make stupid mistakes. We've all had that put up against our face. If anybody tell you they've never done that to people, they're lying, okay? Don't, don't trust those folks. Keep an uh, eye on them and how they travel, okay? Because they'll do it to... They'll say little lies like that. They become bigger lies and they may expose you or put you in the middle and you be trying to fight your way out because that's not your character. Just because you hung around that person uh, doesn't make that you uh, follow all their ideologies. You know what I'm saying? Everybody should be an individualist. Everybody should question something in their lifetime uh, just to know that they're on the right path of being around certain people or traveling down certain roads, okay? Because you might have to come back with some unexplained unanswered consequences that you're facing but yes um back in the day in my time of growing up 70s and 80s and 90s you know a lot of people just weren't uh accepting of gays or lesbians okay they've been there since centuries i mean it beginning you know not to say the beginning of time but when the earth was created i remember solomon gomorrah and all these things you know all this uh hatred and 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 the whole pestilence thing coming on all gays and stuff like that instead of preaching love because God was love. OK, but he did have his scriptures written out about, you know, um, you shouldn't be uh, attracted to the same sex. But that's another whole video for another whole platform. I love everybody. OK, let's get it together. All right. So um, but Eddie Murphy did have a, a, a sharp tongue and he always put down gay people. But you know what they always say, when you out there putting out gay people and you making jokes at them all the time, half the time you probably want to be like them or with them. Now that's just me. That's what I spoke. That's what I feel sometimes when you got people that's really downing uh, a, a particular subject or group of people. You know, it's almost like being hatred, a hate crime or some sense of that nature, bullying and all that kind of stuff. But it was accepted um, back in the day. Uh, of my growing up childhood. So yeah, Eddie Murphy used to dog the gays out and the lesbians and he just used to make it part of his routine comedy stand-up skits. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so uh, Andy didn't like him for that. I don't know why Andy don't think people can change. Just because you sit up there and act one way half of your life don't mean the other half of your life uh, you're going to hold to that same position. 
Uh, can't can somebody grow? You know, can't you forgive and forget? I mean, especially if he apologized, you know what I'm saying? He's a little bit more older. He's a little bit more conscious and aware of how, you know, society is evolving and where it has come from and this, that, and the third. The energy is holding on to unresolved issues with people like Eddie Murphy that uh, say horrific things about same-sex uh, partnering uh, relationships and stuff, so... Uh, pretty much Titus was like, man, get off of it. Just because he didn't like you, he liked me. I ain't got a problem with him. He loves me. He loves himself some Titus. <laughs> Eddie Murphy, I mean, not Eddie Murphy, but Andy would look at him like, oh, really? You really think that? Please. So they were just having a little bit of the tongue thrusting and, 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 and backbiting and all that. Arr, that cat fight type stuff that women really are known for. Uh, and as well, being petty. <laughs> it was coming out on live screen, in live and in charge and in color, okay? But anyway, like I said, try to go back and research the little clips and you will see what I saw because it was a hot mess, okay? Woo, talk about a cat fight. But anyway, going back to the article, it says, um, The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt star appeared on the episode alongside actress Laverne Car Cla uh, Cox. Laverne Cox, you know, how I got introduced to her was that, uh, where is it, Orange is the New Black, that's when I caught who uh, Laverne Cox had become in, in, in her story and, and, you know, things that led off from her being on that sitcom show, Orange is the New Black, because she started getting a lot of roles in plays and, and movies, and she started taking off on what she felt was the beginning of her career and coming out to society of who she is as an individual and a gender. Okay, so kudos to her. But anyway, it goes on to say, doing which Cohen asked Burgess about working with Murphy on the upcoming film, Dol Dolomite is my name, considering Murphy's well-known history of telling homophobic jokes early in his career, jokes that he has since apologized for. Then it goes on to say, did you get to chat with him at all? That's Andy Cohen pretty much asking Titus about the comedian. Okay. And of course, Titus looking at him like, okay, you trying me. You are trying me. You are trying me, son. Okay. A daughter or uh, she. <laughs> but how Titus was looking at it. He, he wasn't giving no gender to uh, any coin. He was saying he's like it. And he's about to get, get it. <laughs> So anyway, it goes on to say the article, of course I did. Why wouldn't I, Burgess, cut in? Yeah, of course, Cohen responded. You know, kind of saying that like, yeah, mm-hmm, whatever. He may like you for the moment, but he don't like us. He don't like our uh, gender. He doesn't care for us, Titus. Why are you aligning yourself with him? That's pretty much what Andy wanted to say, but he was holding back. But he's giving us shade, shade upon shade, okay? Uh, I'm Shoot, he gave us the whole tree. <laughs> With all of his coverings, all right, we were just feeling breezes going left and right, left and right. The breeze was just flowing, you know, <laughs> in a hot summer day. But I was cool. I was cool, honey, because that big old shade tree, that big old oak shade tree was covering me from the heat because it was getting down up in there. But anyway, moving from that, going back to the article, it said, um... Well, no, I wonder if you got close at all. That's what Andy was responding to. He was very problematic for the gays at one point when I was coming up. That's whole perspective Andy was giving that how he felt about Eddie Murphy back in the day. And then um, Titus said, oh, I see. He wasn't pro problematic for Titus. And we had a wonderful time. OK, speaking in third person. All right. Like Tamar Brassett, the majority of her time when we see her on Braxton Family Values or when she's doing interviews. She's always in the third person. I'm like, come on out now. Come on with it. But Titus was talking in the third person. He was saying, you know, he was very problematic for the gays at one point when I was... No, I'm sorry, that's Andy. Uh, he was saying um, he wasn't problematic for him, Titus was saying. And we have a wonderful time together. Uh, any troubles he may have had with gay people, I guess, are gone because he loved me. <laughs> said okay to mr cohen all right and as andy cohen began to introduce the next segment of watch watch what happens live burgess appeared to speak to someone off camera i'm thinking he's speaking to the producers or the assistant or somebody because he like he ain't feeling Andy on none of the questions none of his platform he just wanted to get the hell out of there but he know he was booked he wanted to get paid so that's just how he has to go because he knows he's been on andy uh 
Cohen shows before in the past. I can't remember when, but he said it, not me. And I'm just uh, backing him up with it, okay, from his own words. That went in an article. That's my side, boy. Y'all know who I get down. If y'all been with, with me from the first jump, okay, from the first video, y'all know how I get down. I always, you know, read an article and I give you my spin on it and I go back. I'm very opinionated that way. Stay with me. Let me guide you here and there, okay, through the, the waters of my uh, videos as I go through them. Because it'd be rough, turbulent water sometimes. I, I have to pump the brakes. I have to uh, put the boat on the on land sometimes. I have to get out and just say, whoo, it's too much. Let me talk about it, okay? Let me get it off my chest because this is what I feel about this subject before I even end it. I've been on top through the whole video, which y'all all know I'm a very big, long-winded type person. But you'll be to learn something from it before. You know, my perspective, my viewpoints on things, okay? Because I know everybody got a viewpoint. Everybody got an opinion. My word just don't go. It's not golden. It's golden in my life, but it may not be golden in your life. But at least I gave you another way to think. I mean, another perspective, okay? So get down in them comments and tell me what you think. <laughs> on each last one of my videos that I put out. Because I love hearing from you and I do comment back, okay? But anyway, going back to the article, it said, um, it's okay. As Cohen began introducing the next segment of Watch What Happened Live, Burgess appeared to speak to someone off camera and wave his finger in disgust. When Cohen saw this, he laughed. What are you saying, Titus? And Titus like, this ain't for you, girl. This is, uh, I'm talking to somebody off camera. Keep on, do your show. That was my sidebar. Okay, but what he said was, keep going, girl. He responded, do your show. Okay, so I was close. I was close, y'all. I was very close to what he said. I don't think I had to look at somebody's demeanor and their facial expressions, and then I can pretty much tell you on point. Spotty, what do you call it? A Johnny Spot? No, what's, what, what do you call it? Johnny on the spot. I've been done told you what that person's feeling, how they're feeling, and uh, what they're probably going to do next, okay? And I really be on point. I'm just perceptive that way, okay? But moving on back to this article, it said, The tense moment didn't go unnoticed by viewers, and Burgess shed light on the interaction with the Instagram comment that has since gone viral, in which he called, Cohen a messy queen, okay? She can be a messy queen. Yes, I said it. Don't care he knows either. Burgess wrote, he should remember his talk show isn't an episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. It's a place where artists come to talk about art and have a little fun, okay? Not a place to rehash old rumors or bring a star negative press. He's talking about Eddie Murphy and, you know, uh, Cohen spitting dirt on him even in the future, even though he had apologized, since apologized for. I mean, how many times a person got apologized for saying they was wrong for making a statement, comment, or view, how having that type of viewpoint when it was selfish, when it was degrading, when it affected a lot of people. I mean, it's called like, Hold your tongue on certain things. Skate around certain issues. And if you just really have to tell the truth, stand your shit and tell the truth. If you still believe that way, stand firm in it and, and, and let everybody know, hey, I still feel this way. You know what I'm saying? It's my right. It's my uh, 13th Amendment. I can do it. Freedom of speech. Freedom of the press. Hey. But that's what uh, pretty much I got from the conversation. Okay, then we go back. It says, Sunday was a display of ratchet behavior by a well-known connected man having blatant disregard for one of his guests. He continued, if only time were taken to know who I am and not assuming that I am the character I play on TV, he would know how to conduct a proper interview with at all. With at, okay, with at all. I received four Emmy nominations for acting, not for being myself. Okay? Go ahead, Titus. Read and Read them, honey. Going back to the argument, says Burgess went on to say that he, had, he held back his feelings in the moment and said that Cohen should rip a page from Pal Anderson Cooper's book when it comes to conducting professional interviews. And how I'm taking this, he's saying, get your head out your ass, Andy. Okay? Stop going on what your feelings and showing your demeanor on a subject and a person. All right. That's not fair. It's almost like you're stereotyping a whole cast of people. Forgive and forget is what Titus was saying. Forgive and forget. <laughs> but anyway, going back to the article, he said he was lucky I had my wits in Christian values that day. Okay. Because he could have got it. He could have got worse with what he's saying. Forget about putting them hands on somebody. He would have well, whipped him with his tongue and his wits on it from the top of his head to the sole of his feet and probably went back up and down several times until Andy got the point where Andy just threw out the white flag and said, I surrender. Okay, I'm sorry. I surrender. <laughs> 
because he was their poet child. That white shirt he had on considered to be a roasting shirt. You know, they always say the black or the dark gray. They finna get it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Titus finna wild out behind him. He did good with that white. And that little mic'd up little thing he had. He was ready. He was set on gold, ready to lock, low, and spray. Every kind of insult back at Andy Cohen if he had the chance and opportunity, okay? But he was thinking about professionalism, so he stayed in his rights and his right frame of mind. Okay, that was my pun intended, my side opinionated opinion. Getting back to the article. It said, he was uh, lucky that day. I always keep it class, the bird just finished. Being friends with other talented celebrities doesn't make your talent. It makes you friends with other famous celebrities. He should rip a page for Anderson Cooper and learn to do his job. Okay. And Cooper, Anderson Cooper must have a good book out there. If he putting all these wisdom and these golden nuggets, expressing it came from Andy Cooper's, Anderson Cooper's book. Okay. I know he's a journalist, uh, more so like a political type analyst for CNN. Yes, I know who uh, Anderson Cooper is. Cooper is, okay? But anyway, um, going back to the article, it says, it's worth noting that while producers do not conduct pre-show interviews with its guests like other late night shows, it is known that Cohen and fans that call in often ask his famous guests about old rumors as Burgess called them. So celebrities are usually ready to answer unexpected questions that come at them during the show or the live show. And of course, you know, you live and when you get a caller and they want to say something stupid or out of pocket, yeah, you want to go off on that caller and, and make it known that you're not a punk up in this situation. But sometimes you have to embellish, take a lot, don't give them really what they want uh, of a unpleasant demeanor or a voiceful opinion back to them because you still want to keep them watching you. You still want to be relevant unless you just want to be drama filled and ratchet. Then you get a double-edged sword. People will probably like you because you got that makeup that they're accustomed to, that they uh, have an understanding with. And then you might get folks that be want to read you for film and say they don't like you because your personality has changed, your demeanor has changed, and you just spew hate all the time. You know, you get it every kind of way when you're just trying to express your real opinion. But like I said, when you get into that fishbowl entertainment business, you become under the microscope and people do not see you as human beings anymore. They feel that they're supporting you, so they kind of own you. <laughs> And this is my my opinion of how people do and get down. That's why mm -mm, I give y'all what I got. I give it to the fullest. And I don't care about, you know, super chatting and, and you giving me money for this, that, and that. This, that, and the third. Because sometimes I feel like, oh, all that money you trying to buy me. You pretty much trying to say I can I can be censored. And no, <laughs> no, whatever I put out, I put out because it's my true opinion. And I try to be very conscious of you know, being diverse, understanding other people's culture, understanding, you know, different aspects before I give out my opinion. Okay, and I'm not ashamed to say I'm sorry that I felt this way. I don't feel this way anymore. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody should be evolving and learning and being able to express their selves in different ways and manners where it's not insulting or, or infringing on somebody else's happiness. Okay, but anyway, that's again my sidebar, my opinion. Okay, I get down like that now. Uh, but going back to the article, it said, um, not only that, but Burgess has appeared on Watch What Happens Live on four previous occasions through the years. So he is well versed in the dynamic and topics area of the show. Uh, then it goes back where it says Cohen shared his side of the story on Monday's episode of his Sirius XM radio show. Andy Cohen live revealing that Burgess actually stormed out of Watch What Happens Live studio at the show wrap. Okay, he didn't get him a cocktail. Didn't have a cocktail in between the taping of the show. <laughs> he like, fuck him I and, and fuck the show. I basically get my cocktail on the way home. Okay, or oh, when I get home, I'm going to pull it up solo. <laughs> and really get on my Twitter and get my fingers to going. Okay, on my Instagram and get my visual going. All right, and that's pretty much what he did, y'all. That's pretty much what he did. Okay, um, he couldn't hold back no longer. And then we go back to the article. It said he wasn't having me come and explain. What can I tell you from the jump? I was trying, but no idea. He ran out of there. Didn't I sign the guest book? He just ran out. He was like, he knows I was here. He went on. That's what he said to the person who asked to sign the guest book. It was something else. All right. 
The late night host said that he thinks Burgess initially got pissed at him when Cohen said he didn't know about Burgess writing a musical for The Preacher's Wife before the comic retorted that he had talked about it two other times on this show. I've done 13 episodes. Forgive me for forgetting you wrote the musical about The Preacher's Wife, Andy said. Uh, I like the guy. I ran into him at a bar in Harlem like eight months ago, and we had a really nice talk. So he's, I guess, trying to play catch up on what him and uh, Titus Burgess or TB had uh, shared some months, months ago. Okay. He went on to also say he made entertaining. He made an entertaining show. Coin concluded. Uh, sometimes it's fun to watch the show when the guests hate the host. Okay, so pretty much Andy Cohen is eating his uh, words and he's being uh, a comedian about it because Andy knows when he's being shady. He does know this. So don't don't get it twisted. Okay, but whatever makes this show drama feel and the ratings are going through the roof, he's gonna continue to do it. He's like, I'm trying to get the people what they want. <laughs> he's really like Wendy Williams, if you want to tell the truth. Of course, he's giving his perspective and his opinion mixed in uh, the pot with the rest of the people's and their opinions on certain topics and subjects. But, you know, that's Hollywood. That's entertainment. OK, they're going to put you on the spot. And it just depends on how well versed you are with interviews and how you want to look after the interview, after they chop it up, of course. But they're going to um what do you call it? Shine mostly on the stuff that's negative and how you deal with it, okay? That's just how TV get down. That's how reality shows get down. That's how the world of entertainment gets down. So like they say, if you can't stand the heat, get out the kitchen. But Titus ready to throw them bowls <laughs> with the words, of course. He ain't trying to be physical with nobody. He ain't got that kind of money to go to jail and sit there on a salt charge in this you know, this type of nature. He like, mm-mm, I could be making my pump, my money and still get Andy Cohen straight. Okay, because he got a sharp tongue, y'all. He got a sharp tongue. But, like I said, if you want to continue to work in Hollywood and in the entertainment field, you got to dot your I's and cross your T's and know when to cross them uh, murky waters, okay? Because there are sharks out there. They show sharks, snakes, and any other kind of reptile out there that get down to hurt you, okay? The human race, all right? Some of us, not all. Okay, but that's all I had for Watch What Happens Live and the Cohen versus Titus Burgess, how they got down on Sunday night. Go check it out. I'm sure somebody got the video. <laughs> okay, but as you know, I will be back more than likely not tonight, but I'll be back for another video. You can bet your dollar on that one, okay? You can bet your dollar because I'm out loud in color and ready to lock and load and spray y'all with videos uh, garnering my opinion, <laughs> my opinion, my opinion, my opinion, okay, but, uh, y'all have a, a fun and, and well-rested night, and I will see you next video, all right, bye.